Hey, I'm Albert, and today I'm going to show you how to make PBR materials using AI, including a color map, normal map, height map, ambient occlusion map, and roughness map. I have two methods that I'll show you today. Both are fundamentally free. One is a little more complicated than manual, and the second is provided by today's sponsor, Poly from withpoly.com, who have a reliable online service that lets you make PBR materials and check out an existing library of community assets. But first, let's get going with the first and local method. You will need three things. First of all, the Auto 1111 Stable Diffusion UI, which looks like this, or actually any way to use Stable Diffusion that you want. Because we don't need any special features or extensions, this is all easily done with most installations of Stable Diffusion. Now, you will need some basic knowledge of how to use this stuff, so make sure you're comfortable with using Stable Diffusion, but it's really not hard. So um, I'm sure you can follow along even with little experience. Then next, you will need the model Texture Diffusion, which is most easily downloaded on Civit AI. This is a model trained on Creative Commons Zero Textures, which means it's nice and flat, like a good diffuse texture should be. You can tell here in this example with the stones, there is not a lot of shading or anything because in a good texture, that's all added later through the height maps, the ambient occlusion and so forth. So this is a great model um, that you can download for free. It doesn't need any VAEs or any of that complicated stuff. You just click here and put it in your models folder like you would with any other stable diffusion model. And then last but not least, you need the materialize tool, which is available also via the link in the description. It's a free tool built in Unity that allows you to create all sorts of maps based on a diffuse texture. So you can just download that for Windows and put it in a folder where you don't need any special permissions to run it. More on that later. But first, let's get prompting because um, it's quite simple to create a diffuse texture using the texture diffusion model in Stable Diffusion. So um, a great way to start your prompt using this model is by entering PBR, which kind of activates the model. That's a good uh, trigger word. And uh, then you just describe what you want. So I want, let's say, dirt and moss with pebbles. And uh, let's add some more descriptors. So what I found is close up is usually pretty good. It gives nice detail, um, detailed. I want it realistic. So I'm gonna add photo, um, real, high detail, you know, basically like you're prompting anything else. And now the negative prompt, um, as you would, I don't want it to be cartoon or illustration, you know, 3D render, sketch, black and white. B and W, that sort of thing. Of course, if you do want a black and white texture, um, you shouldn't prompt against it, obviously. And now my favorite sampler has become DPM++ 2M Keras. It's nice and fast. It's really uh, detailed. I um, want enough sampling steps to really get some details. So I'm going to put that up to 50. I want four options, four, four different uh, options to pick from. And width and height is 512 by 512. That's perfect. CFG scale, seven is great. And of course, very important, we do want a seamless texture so we can tile it. So we have to hit this tiling option, which is also available in other interfaces, I'm sure. And that's it. We can already hit generate and see what we get. All right, here we go. We have four different options. Um, that's a little too lush for, for my taste, but the rest looks pretty cool. So this one's mostly grass and moss. There's dirt, there's pebbles in it. It did what we wanted. This has a little more pebbles. And this one is the most realistic, I'd say, of the four. So I do kind of like that. Um, let's, let's try to get some more out of there. If you want, there's also kind of a hidden feature in this UI in that you can right click on the generate button and click generate forever. And then it'll just continue until you stop, which can be helpful um, if you just want to watch and see if any results catch your eye. One disadvantage is that the previous generations will no longer appear in here. So you have to go into your outputs folder but I do see some that I like. This one's my favorite so far. Let's work with this one. Okay, so our next step is we uh, go to the image to image tab with the same exact settings. So I'm just gonna send this to image to image to copy all the settings, even though it's not the image I want. And then I can remove it and drag in the one I do like. And um, what I'm gonna do now is actually upscale this with uh, not an upscaler, but an image to image method that one of you taught me. Namely, I can just increase the width and height to 1024 by 1024. Set the batch count to one, I only need one. Same sampling method to Mkaris. And um, actually turn down the denoising strength to 0.2 
which makes it easier on my GPU and doesn't change the results too much, but adds detail and scales it up. So that's really cool. Um, of course, you have to remember to hit tiling so it continues to be seamless. And now we generate again. And here it is. So you can see it's pretty big. It's bigger than the 512 by 512 result for sure. It can be blurry in parts, but it's definitely a usable texture. We could edit this in more detail if we wanted to with in painting and so forth, but I'm gonna save this. So right click, save image as, make a new folder here, and I'm gonna call it dirt and moss SD underscore original. So here we go. I'm saving it as a PNG and hit save. And now we're gonna go enter Materialize. After downloading Materialize, I just uh, uncompressed the folder into my local disk C, which doesn't require any special permissions to put anything in. And now I can just open it like any other app. It opens, and funnily enough, this is actually running in uh, Unity. So this is basically a game that's running here. And um, it's all kind of small, so I'm sorry about that. I can't really zoom in at all on these, but I'll read them out to you. And there's this object here that we can use to preview our existing material. So the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is import our diffuse map just by clicking this button here, navigate to the folder you saved it in. And if I want, I can select this folder and click add to favorites so it adds it in here and we don't have to navigate there every time. And here it is, select it and it opens and you can already preview the color. But of course, it's completely two dimensional. So what do we do? We make a height map first. And to do that, we go to the far left here where it says height map and hit create. And now you can see with this slider, you can adjust where the preview is and you have some presets set here. And what I like doing for the height map is actually hitting details first. So we get a nice crispy map here and um, we can increase the contrast if we want, you know, if we want it to be really juicy here. And you can see that it's um, kind of increasing the height and depth. So just remember dark goes in, white goes up like any depth map or similar. And so that looks kind of accurate and I can click set as height map if I'm happy with it. Of course, you also have all these detail sliders that I'm not gonna get into. Now we have that. And now next we wanna make a normal map. So same, we click create and here we go. It made a normal map pretty much instantly from our height map. And again, we can kind of change the contrast here if we don't want such an extreme thing, but I actually kind of like it. We do have a very crispy um, end result that we're going for, so I can set that as my normal map. And now we're already getting somewhere. So with these three, we can actually preview our nice material by hitting the show full material button, and it'll make a preview so we can see kind of how it's displaced. We also have different objects we can map it onto. So here's a little sphere where we see our map. We can put it on a cube, etc. And here we can kind of tell something's not quite right. So I would say the height map is a little extreme, so we can go back into create. And if we want, you know, now that we've generated a normal map from the detailed one, we can also hit the displacement um, preset. So the displacement isn't quite as extreme, it's a little more blurry. So if we set that as a height map and preview again, you can see it's a little, little better. It's not quite as crispy. Now, of course, what I'm sure you're noticing as well is that it is a little shiny. And that's because we don't have a good roughness map yet, or rather a smoothness map, making it think that we want a very glossy texture. We can fix that by going to smoothness map, create. And um, this is the exact inverse of a roughness map. So if you work in Blender at all, for example, the roughness value uh, increases how little something reflects, right? So if you turn up roughness to one, it doesn't shine at all, there's no glossiness. And if it's at zero, it's fully glossy. Smoothness is the opposite. If smoothness is fully white, I can show you by turning up the base smoothness to white, it will be super, super shiny. It looks wet, right? And if we turn it to fully black, it's the same as if we set the roughness to full, making it completely matte. Of course, in real life, we want something in the middle there. So I'm going to adjust the base smoothness to something like that. I mean, we don't want a wet texture, but we do want a little bit. So I can increase the contrast a little bit, make some spots a little brighter than others. You know, the moss maybe is a little dewy, something like that. And once we're happy with that, I set it as a smoothness, show the full material again, and you can see it's a little shiny, and we have a nice, mossy dirt texture here. 
on a sphere, it looks like this. So you can adjust any of these at any point. And now the final thing that we also get from Poly is an ambient occlusion map, which makes this whole thing really pop. So if we hit create, it'll simulate how the light falls onto it. And you can see that it attempted to guess where the shading would be just a little bit. We can increase the power if we want it to be really extreme and three dimensional, set that as the ambient occlusion map. And now you can see it just added a little bit more detail and shading to our final material preview. So I think that's pretty neat. We can now save our project. Let's do file format PNG, save project and name it dirt and moss select. And now in our PBR materials folder, you can see we now have all those maps saved. So here's our ambient occlusion map. Here's the original diffuse map. Here's the height map, our normal map, and our smoothness map, which is practically black. And last but not least, we have this little materialize file in here so that we can always go back into materialize and edit our project. But like I said in the beginning, there's a much easier way to make PBR materials using AI, and that's with Poly. Poly can be found at withpoly.com, and it's a 3D material creator using AI. But not only that, not only can we create our own PBR materials by entering prompts in here, it's also a giant community library of existing textures. So as you can see, you can browse all of these community created textures down here and see if maybe someone already made the material you're looking for. You can click on any of these and check it out. It's really high quality. It has all the necessary maps from the color map, also nice and flat with uh, normal maps, height maps, ambient occlusion and roughness. So all the ones that uh, we created with a little more effort earlier and it's free for personal and educational use already and has a commercial license possible with poly infinity. But let's create our own with the prompt we had earlier. Let's enter that dirt and moss. You can see it's already searching the library as well in case someone's already made it with pebbles, close up, detailed, photo real eye detail. And um, here are some decent results. You can see there's something mossy, likely planty. There's dirt with pebbles, but not exactly what we want. So nothing easier than that. We just hit generate and it's going to make what we want. You can see up here is a loading bar here. You can edit your prompt. You can pick your resolution up to 2k is included. And with poly infinity, you can go up to 8k. Down here, if you know more specifically what material you want, you can select from general, organic, if it's, you know, it's fleshy or wet, you know, you want something like that, matte and shiny. And in just a moment, we will see what it's generated for us with these default settings. Once it hits the end of the loading bar, I assume it's generated the base color and is now making all the maps like you see. So here you go. You can see we got the pebbles, we got dirt, we got a little bit of moss there and a nice 3D preview here. If you want, you can change the background and the environment, um, set it to, let's do sunset, and you see how it looks in a different light. So that's pretty cool. And as you can see down here, not only did it create the um, color or albedo map, the diffuse texture, but it also made your normal map, the height map, the ambient occlusion map, and the roughness that you can all use to bring this into any 3D program of your choice. But Let's say you want to see something else. You want to see what else it generated. Well, it actually made four different options of our prompt. You can see down here, maybe it's a little closer to what we made earlier. So we want this one or this one, and you can easily just select one of these and it'll set that as the color map. Now we do have to create the rest of the maps manually now, because of course it would have taken forever to make all of those just in case we want a different one. But for that, we have these other features. So we can click on make seamless and hit that button and it'll generate a seamless texture from this image as well very quickly. And here it is. And now we want all the others, right? So for that, we have this button to make PBR maps. We can select general, hit what we want. So those three, we want all three and now generate the PBR maps. And that's how quickly we have a new material. So you can adjust anything you want. Let's go urban here and check out our, tex our texture. 
And we can also adjust all of our render options. So we can say, let's make it smaller. We can check the tiling. We can adjust the height of the displacement and also remove visibility of several maps, right? If we don't want the displacement right now in our preview or the normals, we can check all of that out here. If you want to use anything you find in the Poly Library or one of your own generations commercially and want access to features like 8K resolution and much faster speeds, be sure to check out Poly Infinity with the coupon code ALBERT. You will get one month free and can use anything you create forever with no extra commitments. So make sure you visit withpoly.com and sign up. Here's a comparison again of our two materials. This is the one we made using local stable diffusion and materialize. We have everything we prompted, right? Some dirt, some moss, some pebbles, I guess. And here's the result on poly after some more editing of the prompt. It's really nice and detailed. You can tell all the individual pebbles, the moss, the dirt. It's definitely more realistic than what I was able to achieve locally. Here's the full prompt for those interested. And I did set the material type to organic and the resolution to 2K. Still, we're fully remaining in the free tier. I hope this video was helpful to you in any way. If it was, hit that subscribe button and like to enable me to make more videos for you like this one. As always, I'm Albert Bosazan. Thank you for watching and have fun with Stable Diffusion.